Well, well, well. <laughs> what do we have here? Welcome back to another edition of the Coach EO Show. I am your host, Coach EO. A special shout out to Team Champion Game. Respect to the crew. You guys keep up the great work. Your coach is proud of you. There was a slight delay this morning because my partner and I were putting together a commercial for you guys. Introducing Champion Game Dating. How is everybody doing this morning? How's everybody doing? Before we get into today's topic. Of course, as you know, I will give everyone a warm champion game greeting. 18 people watching. I anticipate those numbers will increase as we go on. How is everybody doing this morning? How is everybody doing this morning? Unique 79 in the building. Always put in that good work. Unique, I see you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Morgan Wasteland. Thank you. Good to see you. Good morning. Squiggly 818. <laughs> good morning to you. Now, nah, I was up working, baby. Working, man. It's a constant grind 24 7. It's a. So, no. Had the game on, sure, in the background. But, uh, Time to work, put in that work. Fear so 85, I see you. Good morning. SNO, putting in the good work. We everybody, everybody take a moment and say hello to SNO. That's the baby girl. <laughs> she puts in the fantastic work. I appreciate her. Very important contribution or com contributor to myself and the champion game movement. Very special lady. Everybody say hello to SNO. That's my girl, Joe Blass. I see you. Don Coolio. Good morning. Frederick McGee had a fantastic coaching session with Frederick last night. Mr. Cashmere. That's Mr. Cashmere. Everybody say hello to Frederick. That's my dude, Mr. Cashmere. Joe Blass, I see you. Zane Ali, that is my partner. That is my partner. Champion Game Productions. Everyone give Zane Ali a very special. Champion game, welcome, of course. That is my partner. Respect to Mr. Zane Ali. Babis Michael, you want to see my face? <laughs> All right. I understand that. I do understand that. We'll get the face on there. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Hope you're doing a, a well, Babis. The positivity pill, that's my guy. Uba tuba to the chat. <laughs> Yes, yes, Uba Tuba. Good morning, good morning to the Forge Project. Jay, I see you. Good morning. Luis Suarez, I see you. Good morning, good morning. Did you guys catch the commercial? Did you catch the commercial? Did you catch it? Did you catch it? If not, here we go. <laughs> We are back. We are back. Yes, yes, yes. Very best lifestyle. I see you. Shalom, shalom. Wash your damn hands. <laughs> Shout out to Danny. All right. And as you know, how we do here at Champion Game, it begins. And it ends with the man. Always. Always. 
Debut book is now available. Cut the bullshit. A guide to living as your authentic self. It could be a life changing tool. It's definitely not going to do the work for you, but it can open things up and it can be a very powerful tool to use if you're in the midst of a transition and ready to face yourself and become your most authentic self. Cut the bullshit, a guide to living as your authentic self, now available on Amazon. Doing extremely well and people seem to love it. As many of you know, I am on Instagram. Follow me, CoachEO underscore champion game. The magic really happens during a one-on-one -on -one coaching session. If you're ready and you want me to be the man for the job, it's an incredible experience. Many of my clients, especially as of late, they are putting in the work. I am so proud of my men. Everything I instruct, they do it. They're seeing results. They're happier. They're more confident. They feel more masculine. And uh, the magic truly happens during one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you're ready to invest in yourself, put in the work, and see these changes you say you want, I can be reached at everettoverton at mail.com. Soon you'll be able to book it directly through a brand new website, which will also have an incredible experience upon entering. That'll be available to you in less than two weeks. For now, everettoverton at mail.com, not Gmail mail, if you are ready. And of course, we are back to the Coach EO Show. Now in this segment, this is open discussion. You will tell me some of the things you hear from females. I will answer, <laughs> excuse me, how did I title this? How did I title this? I will show you how to answer a woman's questions. Now, clearly a woman will come back with a shit test or a question or objection or something like that. I know many of you experience that. So I'm going to show you in this segment how to answer those things, champion game style. So this is participative. I will need you to put in the chat what it is that you hear, what you're having trouble with, what you have a difficult time overcoming or answering or navigating through. That is what I'm here for. So you have me for another 49 minutes, value for value. Let's get this thing going. Feel free to super chat or donate to the channel's PayPal if you receive tremendous value here and it's increasing the quality of your life, not only from a relationship or dating standpoint, but from just an individual standpoint. If you are benefiting from this channel and my messages, value for value as stated in the book, feel free to give back. So yes, 21 people watching. <laughs> whatever women tell you that causes you a little bit of trouble or anxiety or uh, you, you, you don't know what to answer with, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, I say this before. We don't hate women over here, as a matter of fact. When you're on the champion game level, being around a woman is very enjoyable. They bring you their best because they most certainly have to. Uh, you bring your best as a champion. Others are required to bring their best or they're not around. And that's it's just as simple as that. We don't hate them for it. If they can't bring their best, they are simply not around. Okay, and you wish them well on their way out the door. It's as simple as that. So it's not a hatred for women. It's a love for yourself. It's a self-respect that we focus on over here. If a woman's listening, she could also do the same thing. She could say, I have a self-respect for myself, although women... Women, when they say they have self-respect, usually, there's usually some sort of self-torment somewhere in the background. <laughs> some self-torment, something they're not over yet, and they want to put themselves first. There's, there's even for a man. Sometimes when you say, I'm putting myself first, 
it's coming from a place of trauma. I could always tell the difference between somebody who has genuine self-respect or they are in a desperate state and they are coping by trying to project this error of self-respect. There's a big difference. You could always tell from the energy and the vibe from a person if they're coming from a place of desperation or self-torment or they're coming from a place of inspiration and happiness. You could always tell the difference. So what I'm saying here is I want all of my champion game men and my lady champions to do the necessary work, to be the best version of you, to have self-respect, to offer value, not just look to retract or excuse me, to receive, but to give. We are givers over here. So use this time wisely as you have me. I haven't been to I haven't been talking to anyone really. Now are you saying that now now how I would want to ask this follow up question is why would a woman say that? So what did you ask her <laughs> to to hear that response? I haven't been talking to anyone lately. Now unless you're a female and or excuse me. Maybe you need to make that a little bit more clear so I can understand and answer that one. The Magic Mail Seducer, I see you. Don Coolio, I see you. DFW Stamps, I see you. All new names, we are growing, we are growing, we are growing. Mike M, I see you. What do you have trouble with regarding women? I will answer it for you live on the air. You will need to be very clear. I can only help you if you are clear. So what is it that maybe you're asking them out on a date? You're inviting them to do something. Um, whatever it is a woman is going to throw at you. Shit test, objection, uh, counter viewpoint, whatever. I'm going to tell you how to answer that. Now, first and foremost, uh, repair butlers, new name. I'm not sure how I feel about us anymore. Well, this is where you become very sure. She's unsure, you are sure. Remember, women are unsure, women are uncertain, women are shaky, men are stable. So plus, you should have most likely been able to see warning signs up until this point, because if she gets to the point of saying, I'm not sure how I feel about us anymore, you there were some signs, some indications. It begins and ends with the man. So if a woman ever tells you, I am not sure how I feel about us anymore, this is where you say, well, I am sure, and we are going to end this. I am sure, and we're going to end this. You're unsure, I'm sure. We're going to end this. And you got to be prepared to do it. See, that's the thing. A lot of you are afraid to lose the woman. You're losing her anyway. Hence what she said. I'm not sure how I feel about us anymore, which means she's departed from you. She's gravitating away from you, whether it's mentally, emotionally, physically, whatever. So once a woman is unsure, you are sure. Okay. Remember, you are the opposite of what she is. <laughs> She's nervous. You're not. She's concerned. You have an answer. She's got problems. You have solutions. She's stressing out. You, you balance things out. That's what it means to be a champion. That's what it means to be a man. So she's unsure. Okay, guess what? I'm real sure. We're going to end this thing. We're going to end this thing. There is no lukewarm over here. There is no one foot in, one foot out. You know what you want or you don't. It's as simple as that. We're done. That's it. Simple as that. And you got to be prepared to walk. So that's the, again, that's the part that people, most men struggle with. They don't want to let the woman go. Understand this. She's leaving anyway. When she becomes unsure, she's disconnected in some way. Sure. Could be partly your issue. Begins and ends with the man. Why is she unsure? Comes back to your, your coaching and your game and your leadership. So there's something to learn from a woman saying she's unsure. But at the same time, hey, if you're unsure, you're unsure. I need sure people around me. You're in or you're out. That's the way it goes around here. I 
I asked her if she wanted my new number. I haven't been talking to anyone lately. I, I really, really, I asked if she wanted my new number. I need a little bit more information on that, brother. A little more information. My trouble is making statements without being in a temper <laughs> in a temper situation. I am with one. I am with one with lots of temper. Oh, I am one with lots of temper. I must control it. I know, but sometimes I lose my strength. Hey, you got some work to do. We got to. I would. I would. I would advise or encourage you to reach out for coaching because my job is to get to where that. What, what's causing that temper? The core issue. There's there's some unsettled emotions there. There's some resentment there, most likely. Um, you are probably looking outward more than you're looking inward, because if you have a temper, you can't be looking inward. You can't be doing the focus can't be on you primarily because or if or if it is on you, you're not doing the work. So you're either not doing the work. You're not proud of yourself. There's a little self-hatred going on and that's happening. That's why you have a temper. There's unhappiness there. You're not happy with yourself. Self-belief is not there. The confidence isn't there. The peace isn't there. So my advice, don't project that out into the world. That's not their problem. You got to do the work, my man. And I say that with love. The positivity pill. Good morning, the Paul 9559. I see you. Good morning. Hope you have a good day. Appreciate you checking in. Man, this is going to sound cocky, but I'm dealing with four women right now. Of the four, three want a relationship, and I'm looking for, and I'm looking for that. Is it my vibe? I I swear I'm upfront about everything, and I and I'm looking for that. You know, women say they want a lot of things until they get it. <laughs> I, I have one of my famous quotes: "Women want freedom until you give it to them." Now they don't want freedom anymore. So women live in the moment; they're creatures of the moment. So they say in one moment they want a relationship, and that could be because you're a little aloof maybe or you're not giving them boyfriend energy. But according to what you're saying, you're dealing with four women, th th uh, three want a relationship, and I'm looking for that. I, I Maybe you meant I'm not looking for that. Clarify that. Okay, no, not, no looking for that, I mean, okay. My thing is if you're doing relationship type – types of things with women, they're going to think of you in that regard. See, there's been women in my life. There was no relationship energy. It's, I tell you from the start what this is, we get together. There are women that, that, I, that were just basically sex partners of mine. They would come in at the same time, every time, 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night. They would stay for approximately two hours and they knew the deal. They'd come in. I would say, hello. You're looking good. Uh, maybe a glass of wine, maybe not. Music playing, right to the bedroom. Time to fuck. Go about an hour and a half, two hours. Um, we do our thing. Maybe I get a massage at the end, most likely. A little massage for a job well done. Thank you, champion. And they put their clothes on and they leave. And I tell them to leave. So, and then text me when you get home. It was good to see you. Until next time, champion game, out. So, it begins and ends with demand. Most likely, if you, if if a woman knows what is, and you're being very clear with her up front, and you're not showing her your any other energy, you're not laying on the couch and saying, "Hey, you want to watch the new Netflix series together?" If you're not doing relationship stuff with a woman, she most likely won't be relationship minded when it comes to you. So it begins and ends with you. I would I would imagine you're doing some extracurricular things, and if all you're looking for is something casual, you need to keep it casual then. Eric Extraordinaire, I see you. She's been unsure a million times. Your assurance will throw her through a loop. Not unsure if she wants to question it. Now unsure if she wants to question it. Facts. Facts. They're little shit tests. I'm unsure. I don't think you love me. I, uh, blah, blah, blah. Hey, listen, I don't have to prove my love to you. My, the, the, the Truth be told, you never have to prove your love to her or anybody. The fact that you are present with them and you make time for them is good enough. Truth be told, as a man, your time is more valuable than anything. Your time. And if a woman doesn't see that, well, she quite frankly doesn't see value in you or she's low quality herself. So, yes, 
When a woman tells you something like that, hey, you don't have to prove yourself to a woman. You really don't have to prove yourself to a woman. And a woman may not like that. Oh, well, my time with you and the things I tell you, I mean it. If I like you, you're going to know. If I don't like you, you're going to know. And if you have that kind of vibe with everyone, not just women, but men too, even if business deals go bad, business partners, things transition and they go sour, hey, you let them know, hey, we had a nice run. Things have changed. We got to depart now. That's the way it is when you're a man. Check make. I see you. Or chime, chimak, chime. <laughs> Tell us a bit more about the intro. Michael. My Babis Michael. Well, let's watch it again, Babis. No no words need to be said. Check it out. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. You know, I wanted to put in the text there. We wanted to put in the text to explain things. You can take your mask off when you're with me. You're safe now. For all you men out there that want to judge women for everything, okay, you shall also be judged. Remember that, you Christians, you religious people, you, you lukewarm bastards. You want to be religious one day and not religious the next. You're embarrassing yourself, and you're a phony. I will tell you this. Everybody has a history. Yes, you've done some dirty things in the dark. Eh, so sh so has she, maybe some. Clearly, you don't want to be with somebody who's been through the alley too many times. If you've been through the alley once or twice and you decided, hey, I tried it, not for me. Okay, but if you keep going back to the alley, well, stay over there then. Okay, I get that. But you can take your mask off here. For one, I won't tolerate that mask, and I don't want to deal with what's behind that mask, okay? I don't want to deal with that. I'm not attracted to that, okay? That's number one. I'm not attracted to that. Have you ever told a woman you're not attracted to her bullshit? Hey, listen. Listen, that stuff right there, it's turn off. You ever want You want to get a woman going? Tell her she's turning you off. Tell her that. Only if it's true. Don't say it as a technique or a strategy to try to build attraction. Truth be told, just tell her. If something is a turn off, I want you to tell her. Hey, that right there, big turn off from me. I would advise you not to do that again. It wouldn't be in your best interest. Have you ever talked to a woman like that before? Have you ever talked to a woman like that before where you said, and you said it in a matter of fact way, you don't have to scream and look at her like you're, 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 you're highly agitated. You look at her in a matter of fact way and you say, hey, listen, you know that right there, big turn off. I would advise you stay away from that and don't do that again because it would not be in, it will not be in your best interest. That's champion game. That's being a man. Raising your voice and throwing out all these threats, knowing you ain't going to do shit on the back end. Come on now. So we, we tell women, you're safe with me. Take that thing off. You're safe. You can trust me. With the blindfold, trust me. Because there's things you're going to bring out of women, a sexual side she did, that sh she couldn't wait to un to unveil or to reveal but you needed the right guy to do that so if she trusts you you can do anything to a woman <laughs> almost anything i laugh because it's true and so if you don't get that commercial that's fine keep watching it i've lived that life that is my life Malachi Brown, I see you big uh, contributor to the champion game in terms of commenting, always expressive and available for feedback. Just got done taking my pre-cal exam, had to tune into the show. That's what's up. Hope you did well, brother. Hope you did well. Stay committed and keep your focus. I'm at H. You made it sound like a business meeting. 
It's all business, baby. It's all business. BT Platinum, I see you. Brandon, question. Why would I come home with you tonight if I don't know you? Well, I would say that it's almost like an objection in sales. You know, why should I buy this product? Or like I had to educate someone I'm coaching right now in sales or for sales. When price becomes an issue, you haven't built enough benefit to the product. You haven't built enough benefit to the product. So when a customer is, if the price is still higher on the value scale than than the product or the service, you haven't built enough value and there hasn't built enough trust. There's not enough trust and not enough value in you. I really mean that. Now, women are kind of silly anyway, and they could see a bunch of value in you and still throw out something stupid like that. <laughs> okay? They can still throw out so something stupid like that. But I want to build up the man more than anything. So I would say when a woman poses a question, why would I come home with you tonight if I don't know you? You could simply say, well, you don't have to come home with me tonight. You don't. That's your choice. But opportunities like this, maybe it's one time. I would say that. I would say that. I would say you certainly don't have to come on with me if you don't wish to. But opportunities like this maybe only comes around once. That's what I would say. That's one of many things that I could say in that moment. But why would I come home with you tonight if I don't if I don't know you? How I would advise is she hasn't seen enough value. There isn't enough attraction and there wasn't enough rapport and trust for her to feel safe to just and how you maybe even invited her to come back is very important. Because if you invite a woman to come back in the right way, she wouldn't even maybe she wouldn't even want to think to say that. So it comes back to presentation, how she sees you, attraction level, the vibe, everything. So but if a woman told me, hey, why would I come back with you tonight if I don't know you? And I say, hey, you certainly don't have to come back. One time I told a woman on a first date that I'm fucking tonight. Hear me, hear me loud and clear. I told a woman one time I'm fucking tonight and you have the opportunity to be the one to get fucked. So if it's not you, it's going to be someone else. Do you want it to be you? I swear to God, I said that on a date to a woman on the first date. I'm fucking tonight. Okay. It can be you or it doesn't have to be you. You pick. She got fucked that night. And it turned her, and, and she completely changed, like completely changed. Like not that she was disrespectful, but she was one of those highly educated women. <laughs> one of those downtown Chicago, highly educated, every man kisses her ass. Well, I could. I, there was an error about her like that to some degree. But then I put her in check. I'm fucking tonight. And it can be you. Would you like it to be you? If not, it'll be someone else. You pick. If you got the balls to talk to a woman like that, you'll have a lot of pussy. And it'll come easy to you. But you got to say it right. You can't say it with a smile. You can't say it with feminine, like a little, your, your posture, your body language, how you look at her when you say it. You got to say it with some balls between your legs, some brass balls. And you got to tell her like that. I'm fucking tonight. <laughs> I'm fucking tonight. You want it to be you? Make a decision. She came home with me and got fucked all night. That's it. <laughs> Maybe a little behind with the chat because in StreamYard there is a delay. So hang in there. Everybody seems to like the intro. Hell yeah, this champion game style, baby. Appreciate that. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Tate, I see you. What's going on? New name. New name. New names all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I love the old names. I love the day ones. I love the consistent people. But it, boy, is it great to see 
the channel building like it is. Like I said before, um, I do suspect this channel may have been, uh, it's not being pushed perhaps due to the content, which why I created a backup channel as well. Always think ahead. I do have a backup channel right now. Subscribe to it. Coach Everett Overton. Coach Everett Overton is the channel. There's no content on there as of yet, but it is there just in case. Because with the amount of subscribers we have and the quality of this content, I know we are not being pushed right now. So it is your job also to keep this channel alive, to share videos that you feel can be valuable to those around you. Remember, a lot of you, I could tell, you don't, I bet you, you don't say it right. It's one thing to say what I'm saying and the way I'm telling you, I say it, I say it just like that, but it's not, it doesn't just come out of the blue. This is a behavior from the very beginning, from the very first hello. You can't just pull a man out of a bag. Okay. Understand this. This is a lifestyle. This is an entire lifestyle, not just with women, but how you conduct yourself by yourself in business, with your health, with your family, with the outside world, being a man is a 24-7, 365, I don't want to say responsibility, but privilege. You can't just pull a man out of a bag, okay? So it's how you say it. And there's a lot of you, I can tell, put a woman in front of you, you ain't going to be able to say it like that. I already, I can look in a man's eyes and tell if he's a real deal or not. I can tell. I can tell. Just know that. I can look in your eyes. I don't care if you've been in the military. I don't care if you traveled the world. I don't, I don't care what you've been through. I don't care where you've been. I can look at you and I'll know if you're the real deal. I will know. Remember, you can't pull a man out of a bag. It's not real. Being a man all day. Every day from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, that's what it means to be a man. To be a man. You like that? That's going on a t-shirt. Nobody steal that. You can't just pull a man out of a bag. That's right. That's right. Appreciate that, Jay. I see you. I see you, brother. How, how have you been? Long time no talk. Hope all is well. Let me know if you need me. Goo Lion, I see you. Goo Lion, I see you. John, I see you. Safe travels. Have fun in PR, man. Con yo. Put some respect. What's going on? CB2 Smooth, I see you. Good morning. JP831. How do you like to handle compliments from women? I feel like a lot of guys are too quick to compliment back. I think it's nice to receive a compliment and you should be um, uh, grateful to receive it. Now, a lot of you get a compliment. And you don't believe the compliment. <laughs> I, I've noticed that somebody can tell you you look nice and you put your head down. Oh, really? Who me? <laughs> you should know you look nice. See, you should know who you are. So, but when someone appreciates you, you should appreciate that. Because one day, what if no one appreciates you? So you should always you always be grateful for what you have. So if somebody gives you a genuine compliment, they think you look nice, you look handsome, you look sexy, great job, whatever it is. You want to appreciate that and you want to respect them. Yes. So if somebody compliments you, simply tell them, thank you very much. Now, do you have to compliment them back? No, you do not. As a matter of fact, champions look to find the benefit and the beauty in people. So they're the first to compliment, actually. See, a lot of these teachers tell you, don't validate, don't celebrate, don't appreciate, don't tell them nothing. Okay, then don't have anything. Okay, understand that. That only works on low-quality women. Plus, it doesn't even make you feel good to withhold, a, to withhold something that you want to say. Are you doing it for them or are you doing it because you want to say it? Which is why I said, don't laugh at a joke that's not funny. If it's funny, laugh. If it's not funny, don't laugh. Be authentic. 
But truth be told, you should, if you see a sexy woman, a beautiful woman, tell her how she looks. You can you can compliment her scent. I told another guy that the other day, hey, hey, you don't want to compliment the woman? Okay, compliment the extension of the woman. Maybe her fragrance. That fragrance you have on is very sexy. What's the name of that? Yeah, I want that scent on my pillows. Notice that. Notice that you complimented her, an, I would say somewhat indirectly, but it's still a compliment. So if you, for those of you that say, oh, I don't want to compliment the woman because I'm going to gas her head up. I understand. A man does what he wants to do at the end of the day, no matter what. But I was teaching a guy just last night. Instead of complimenting her then, compliment her scent. And if you want to go the extra mile and you want to be a champion, you would go to your local retail shop, Macy's, Dillard's, Nordstrom, Neiman, Saks, and you would go to the woman's counter and you would smell some of the latest fragrances and you would get to know those scents. Have you ever been able to detect a fragrance on a woman and tell her what the name is? Oh, that's flower bomb you're wearing. Oh, that's Chanel Chance you're wearing. Oh, that's. Mark Jacobs decadence. Too much game. Too much game. And really, there should be a charge for this shit. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Mr. Johnson with the $5 super chat. Thank you, sir. Again, good to see you. Hope all is well on your end. And if you need me, you let me know. Good line, you, you reached out to the roommates. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. It's a matter of time before I uh, have a very large platform, probably not on YouTube, but on another network. It's a matter of time. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. This kind of game is unique, authentic, and revolutionary. So... It has no choice but to elevate to the highest plane possible. It has no choice, okay? So just understand that. <laughs> this game is revolutionary, authentic, and one of a kind, and the way it's delivered is impeccable, and it's unique. And it, So the, my status has no choice but to elevate. Now, I might elevate outside of YouTube. Okay, that's fine. But it's going to elevate and is doing that daily. You know why? When you put so much value in, the universe has no choice but to reward you. You put little value in, low effort, the universe, the universe has no choice but to give you what you deserve. <laughs> no opportunities? I would challenge your creativity and your passion and your work ethic. I would challenge that. Plenty of opportunities? I would have to say, let's take a look at your work ethic, your passion, your creativity, your self-belief. That's the bottom line which is why I don't feel sorry for any man that wants to complain and sit and have a pity party. I don't feel sorry for you. If anything, I should, I should not be where I'm at right now. No father, no male role models other than movie stars. Um, no extended education. Um, small, you know, I was very small growing up. Again, I'm not a tall man. I've had to build my body. I've had to reinvent myself several times. I had to make so many tweaks. I've had to hit the wall, transition gracefully, take on the next thing. I don't feel sorry for anybody. As a matter of fact, I should be dead. Some of the things I've done, I should be in the hole or in jail. I really should. And uh, life has shown me grace in many situations. And in some situations, it didn't. Some situations have said, okay, you, lay, you, you made your bed, you're going to sleep in it. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Because you learn through that, hopefully. So this is not just dating game. This is life game. This is champion game. We don't make excuses. We don't, we don't point the finger. We don't hate women. Women are to follow our lead. If she's not following your lead, you're not a leader. It's as simple as that. The writing's on the wall. If a woman's not following your lead, you are not a leader. She can't, she can't follow you. Are there some knuckleheads out there that won't follow anyone? Of course. Get rid of them. Why are you talking to them? 
If you're dealing with a knucklehead that won't change for anybody, that doesn't respect anyone, including herself, why are you dealing with her? Fuck her ass. Fuck her for Vijay. Not literally. Fuck her. Get rid of her. God bless you. Can't deal with you. Simple as that. You don't have to hate her. You don't have to disrespect her. She's not a, she's not a reflection of who and where you and where you're going. So you don't deal with her. Joe Jones, I see you. Al Pacino did that in Cinema Woman. Good movie. Shout out to Mr. Lucario. I'm brainstorming on a traffic campaign for myself and going to include you and others who, who teach true game. Do that, brother. I appreciate it. Value for value. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Jay Dollar, good morning. The Magic Male Seducer, what is for you important, brother? Approaching women on the streets or sitting somewhere and in the moment is convenient for having a talk. There is no convenient time in life. And I'm surprised you keep saying this. And I read your, I've been reading your comments for years now. There is no convenient time. There is no perfect time for anything. There isn't. That's an illusion. <laughs> Every moment is an opportunity for you to take action and get something done, whatever that is. It's not just talking to a woman. Hey, is your grass too long? Go cut your shit. Need to wash the siding? Let's get that power hose out and wash that siding. There is no perfect time. There is no convenient anything. Time is precious. What are you going to do at that time? Are you going to be afraid to talk to a woman? What's so special about a woman and what's so scary? Here's, here's better, better than special. What's so scary about a woman that makes you intimidated when you have a dick and balls between your legs to talk to a woman? It's embarrassing and I have to start badly criticizing it. It's embarrassing. And I know you're saying this with love. I'm saying this with love. There is no convenient time for anything. There is no special time to get started. There is no I'm not ready yet. The conditions aren't perfect yet. I'm not going to start this business yet. I'm not, there, it's never going to be the right time. You have to put yourself out there and just do it. It's as simple as that. I, I can't be nice about this. No one told me, hey, yo, is there a perfect time? No, there is no perfect time for shit. As a matter of fact, if you keep waiting, you're going to lose all your opportunities because you're just going to age and get more bitter and get more nasty and, and, and feel less and less confident about yourself because you keep waiting. Make your move. Do it now. Gulan, I got a question, Coach. I've been hesitant about going out and cold approach. How do I overcome my anxiety and fear? I used to be a lot more confident before. Okay. Hey, you can lose a little confidence. And really how I in, in, interpret that is you got rusty. Okay. Anybody can get rusty. You ever heard the saying, if you don't lose it or if you don't use it, you lose it? Well, that's very true. Doesn't mean you can't get it back. You will get it back. Muscle memory. Okay. I made a video two years ago talking about how to get over social anxiety and how to cold approach. You got to stop making it about women and start making it about you and just life in general. Hello to the old lady coming out of the post office. Hello, ma'am. How are you today? Here, let me get that door for you. Watch your step. Watch your step. You need a hand to your car? No? Okay, great. You have a good day now. Watch her smile. You talk to the old guy at the barbershop. Hello, fellas. How's everybody doing today? Looking sharp, looking sharp. 
You start tipping well when someone helps you. You give a good, uh, good tip, good gratuity, generous. You talk to everyone, and you're generous to everyone, and you're a happy man, and you're not doing anything necessarily for something in return. I don't know how many, I don't know why this is so difficult. And I say this with love, but I'm saying, why is it so difficult to be a quality human being and a strong masculine man that wants to just go out there and be first and make things happen? Why is that so difficult? You know what it is? You got, here's the honest to God truth. I blame your mother most likely. You got poor male role models. I get it. Society is a bunch of fucking phonies, and it really is, which is why I believe my message is crucial today. You go out, you say hello, start with men. Start with men. Really, I mean it. Start with men. Instead of hating on men, start talking to men. What's going on, man? How you doing today? Looking sharp. I'd love to compliment dudes. I'll be honest with you, and I don't have to say no homo. If I see a dude that's on his shit, that's sharp, that put on a dope ass suit that is working hard, that is grinding, that is diligent and disciplined. I'm going to compliment that man. I'm not going to hate on that man. I'm going to compliment him unless he's a jealous little bitch, which I see a lot of jealous little bitches. If he's a jealous little bitch and I know that deep down inside, he's just a jealous little bitch. He can't even be around me. But I'm telling you right now, start with complimenting men. Start with being good to your fellow man first. I really mean that. Be good to your fellow man. Go to men's conventions like the 21 convention or, or my seminars coming up in 2021. Invest in yourself. Be around other men. Uplift your fellow man. Talking to women ain't going to be nothing. Have you ever seen a group of men together having a good time and women are like, how come they're not paying attention to us? Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever gone to a nightclub or a lounge with your boys, dope, dressed dope as fuck, smelling good, looking good, getting some bottles, listening to music, and not even really paying attention to these women. They're there. You appreciate their beauty from a distance, but you don't need them like that. Watch all the women watching you and wanting to be around because you're not kissing their ass because it's about you. Instead, you go to the club. The whole week, you're thinking, what am I going to wear? Hopefully, I could pick up some hoe. You know, what am I going to do? What am this and that stand against the wall, uh, be afraid of them. Man, you better go out there and enjoy your life. Get a group of guys together, dress sharp, put on some damn suits, go to the city, reserve a table, get a couple bottles, sit down and chill, chill, have some fucking fun among your friends and stop worrying about these ain't shit hoes. And I say that with love and watch these women come to you. Again, I'm not against the cold approach. Hey, while you're living your life, you run into a, a, a woman that you want to deal with? Hell yeah, make your presence known and let her know what is. Of course. But the game is not about women. It's about you. So if you're out here living your life happily, the women are going to be there naturally. Winston Wolf, I see you. Cheers to you, brother. I am Mr. Dover. Peace and blessings to you as well. And Joe Blass, I hear you. But don't let that stop you, because I didn't have any either. And I'm a bad motherfucker. <laughs> don't let that stop you, brother. I'm a bad motherfucker. Good answer. I like that. People are scared to, uh, to fail, coach. Failure hurts. People trying to avoid pain. I'm going to tell you something right now. I think it's the opposite. I think you're afraid of winning because when you win, now you got to maintain it. Now you got to lead it. Now you got to show creativity. And that's the part people are afraid of. If I approach her, what if she says yes? What if she does like me? What do I do next? That's the part you're afraid of. I think people get used to failing. They settle into failing. They don't even want to win anymore. I'm going to tell you something right now. My next broadcast is not going to be about women, although I may touch women briefly. But my next broadcast is going to be about pain. Every human being has got to live with pain. Suffering is a whole different topic. But pain, you better, you better count on it. This body is going to feel a lot of pain. 
physical pain, physical sensations. You're going to lose people you love. You better learn how to grieve because you're going to lose people to death that you love very great, very much. And once they leave your life, it's going to leave an empty void. It is, especially if they were important to you. And now you got to live with that void. You're going to live with it. And life may never be the same without them. And you need to understand this. That doesn't mean that it's not that you're, you're worse now. You could even be better now, but you're going to live with pain. And you better understand that. I live with pain. I'm here. I'm telling you, I live with physical pain. I live with some emotional pain. I live. I, I do. Do people need to know about it? No. What they going to do about it? Nothing. But I live with pain. I live with physical pain in my body. I live with some emotional pain. I've lost, I've lost people that I've loved deeply and I miss them every single day. I even sometimes get a wave that hits me so damn hard that I, I, I can't help but cry. Do I do it and broadcast it all over the internet? Fuck no. But I, I will sit with myself for a moment because I lost someone that I truly loved. And the wave hits me. And I have no choice but to weep. But I could admit it. I dry up my tears. I thank God for the experience. And I just got to get back up and keep moving. Because guess what? My time is number two. One of these days and my heart's going to stop beating and I'm out of here. I only say that because it's time. the time is now. The time isn't later. The older you get, the more set in your ways you get and the lazier you might get. Understand that. The time is now. Get your feet going. There is no perfect time. I'm telling you, you're going to live with pain. I live with pain. I live with physical pain and emotional pain. I even have some spiritual pain at times. But I must keep moving forward. I must be. I, I must continue evolving. This is facts. I'm admitting it. Now you can admit it. You waiting on somebody to admit it first? I did it. There's times I, I I'm not sitting around crying all day long. Believe that. But when my when my cat who died, and many of you know about my cat. When, when his face flashes in my mind on a wave, and I remember all we went through and that, that last moment we had together, fuck, it hits me like a cement wall, man. There's sometimes I feed my other pets. I feed them little special dinners and stuff, and I'm like, God damn, I can't believe my boy is gone. I used to feed him all the time, and he's fucking gone, man. And it's a part of life. Death is a part of life. I'm not saying resist death. But death is a part of life. And when you, and when you lose someone you really love, it's going to hit you like a wave, man. And it brings me to my fucking knees sometimes. Good. Good. That means I'm human. And that means I loved. And that means I'm real. You're going to live with pain for the rest of your life. Understand it. Don't resist it. Don't avoid it. Embrace it. You're going to live with pain. It doesn't have to overtake you. You don't have to suffer from it, but you're going to feel pain. You're going to have aches in your body. Don't complain about it. Just deal with it. Try to fix it. Do the best you can to deal with it. But I promise you, you're going to feel sick. You're going to have aches. You're going to feel like crap. You're going to suffer emotionally sometimes because the world is a fucked up place. It's a beautiful place too, but it's fucked up. You're going to feel everything. I'm telling you, I feel everything. But it makes me stronger. I'm grateful for it. And I move forward. This is why I'm so fun. <laughs> you know why I'm so strong, man? Because I embrace it all. I don't resist any of it. I embrace it all. And when you can embrace it all and you can say, hey, that's the best you got. That's the best you got. And you say it with a smile. You don't say it with with anger or resentment or a competitive nature, but you say it with a smile. Hey, that's the best you got. I guess I was stronger than I thought. I'm a bad motherfucker.
You have to be your own support system because if you wait on anyone else, family, friends, women, other men, if you're a woman listening, you're going to be waiting a long fucking time. Take care of yourself. Put yourself first. Once your cup is full, now you can be an asset to those around you. Take care of yourselves first. Keep in mind, and Eckhart Tolle is one of my friends. What you resist persists. And that's one of his lines. What you resist persists. Nothing just goes away until it teaches you what you needed to know. You better start living. You better stop living with fear because life is going to pass you by and you will look back and you will not be proud of yourself. I promise you this. I'm a 40 year old man. I feel like I'm 65. <laughs> I feel like I'm 65. I've lived a very, very full life. And I am very qualified to talk like this. I hope this broadcast helps you. I'm going to be honest with you. Talking about dating is a low standard for me. I'm being completely honest with you. Talking about dating is a very low standard for me. But it's necessary. I get it. But it's a low standard. Talking to you about dating. Dating is important. Connection is important. Intersexual dynamics is important, but it's low on the fucking list. You put yourself last and put a woman first. She has no choice but to disrespect you. I really mean that. Concentrating on dating is low, is a low standard for me. But I do it because it's part of the game. It's part of the business, but it's a low standard. I need you to understand that. I'm being completely honest. It's a low ass standard. I get it. Many of you might say, but I haven't done what you've done, EO. I get that. Get out there and get started. It's not my fault you won't start living. <laughs> it's not my fault. Nobody told me to start li to start to start living. I knew I had to start living. I knew if I didn't go out there and hustle and and fucking bang, become a banger at this life that no one's going to keep me in their house. No one's going to pay my room and board. Many of you are probably just lazy. And you're comfortable and you're sitting in that back room that your parents give you and your parents should kick you the fuck out and force you to become a man. And that's the honest to God truth. And I blame your parents for that shit. Talking about dating is low, a low standard for me. I do it as a way because I know how important women and sex is to you and part of that has been media propaganda you've been conditioned to really want sex that bad yes your biology you want to have sex it's in you yes to procreate but there's a balance and many of you are way out of balance when it comes to sex and the focus on being on women it's not my fault you won't get out there and live and, and realize that what I'm telling you is the truth. The game is not about women. Shout out to Steve Dean Williams. It's not about them. And you don't believe me because you won't get out there and experience it. We love women. We respect women. We won't tolerate their bullshit. As a matter of fact, we don't tolerate anyone's bullshit. It's not just women. Anyone's. 
anyone's. But once you get out there and start tasting some of this shit, enjoy the taste, swallow the food, decide if you want to have it again. That's how you know who you are. That's how you know what you want. You got to go out there and taste some shit. How do you know you're not going to white, 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 like white wine unless you taste it? Maybe you'll love it. Maybe you're more of a red wine drinker. Maybe you're not a drinker at all. Maybe you're a bubble tea uh, drinker. You won't know who you are until you start living and tasting. And then you're going to find out <laughs> in the end, you know who you deserted all this time? The man in the mirror, the woman in the mirror. You, were, you, you went out into the world trying to find yourself and you just did a full circle right back to yourself. If this value brought you some message, there is a, a PayPal. Somebody posted down below. I'm waiting on a multi-millionaire to break my motherfucking ass off. <laughs> That's one of one of a few things that I'm waiting on. Because I know I'm putting out millions upon millions of millions of value out here. Money has no choice but to come to me. Wealth, health, wisdom, prosperity to those around me that are attached to me, that are a reflection of me as well. If this broadcast or, or my message is bringing you value, remember what I said in my book, value for value. It's what makes the world go round. Eric L., good to see you. Brandon, I knew you would like this. The positivity pill. Best message, coach. coach. That's right. I will see you guys on Sunday. We will take calls, call in. I will have a very fun topic, something that will be very engaging. Look forward to that. We'll see you Sunday. More videos to come, more champion game to come. It's my honor and privilege to give you this game. I'm going to play the commercial one more time just in case my dude Steve didn't see it. I'm going to play the commercial one more time, and we'll see you again next time. Until next time, Champion Game, out.